Welcome to Demystifying 5G, a video series brought to you by Rodin Schwartz. Our loyal audience knows for a fact that millimeter wave is an essential part of 5G. Millimeter wave frequencies and wireless communication provide a lot of challenges. One of the challenges is the impact of phase noise. So as we can see here, there's basically two uh, challenges or problems that we face. The one is the common phase error, CPE. The other one is the inter-carrier interference. And on the right hand side, you see basically a 16 qualm signal with uh, additive white Gaussian noise on it. And now if we add phase noise to this, uh, like it is expected at the FR2 frequency range, uh, you can clearly see how the constellation diagram becomes um, twisted. And that's of course something that we want to counter attack. So the two challenges with the inter-carrier interference what we do is basically we address that through a wider subcarrier spacing in FR2 for 5G new radio. Uh, the data and control channels could utilize 60 or 120 kilohertz and the synchronization signal block, uh, the SSB, uh, can utilize either 120 or 240 kilohertz. The other part, the common phase error, we need to address by adding a so-called phase tracking reference signal. This is a specific sequence that has been designed by FreeGBP. And what you see here on the right hand side is basically simulations from the early stage of 5G and R standardization where you can see uh, different uh, phase tracking reference signals or phase tracking, tracking reference signal sequence being utilized but using different patterns. Uh, so in other words, the mapping to the uh, time frequency grid. So, the phase tracking reference signals are optional in the standard. They can be applied in downlink as well as in uplink. And they should be utilized by the receiver to uh, compensate the common phase error. So basically you design an algorithm that uses the information um, or additional uh, info that you get while uh, measuring the phase tracking reference signals and compensate for the CPE. So from a test and measurement perspective, we always try to uh, design equipment that provides the clearest signal purity, uh, best performance. Uh, but in order to test my algorithm to compensate for CPE, I'm looking for something to add, uh, for instance, phase noise. And that's what Roland Schwartz basically did here with our SMW 200A vector signal generator. So if we look into the AWGN block, we will recognize there's a new tab called phase noise. If I select that, I see a numer numerical dis uh, representation of a phase noise model and a graphical one. Um, I can set the frequencies. I can set the corresponding dBC per hertz values. We have also the capabilities to, of course, save a profile that we create or load certain predefined profiles. You see here crystals and PLLs. And um, basically, now I can activate that. If I look at my current signal setup that I'm generating here, uh, it's still 28 gigahertz, it's uplink signal, 100 megahertz of bandwidth. You see here my constellation diagram, an error vector magnitude of 42 dB, so well below uh, 1%. So as soon as I activate now my phase noise model that you can see here, uh, my constellation points uh, got uh, noisier, a little bit uh, uh, longer, so to speak. If I go back, I see my EVM has changed by about uh, already uh, 5 dB. And if I now, just to show you it's not a simulation, um, changing one of these values here, um, then you will see that my uh, model gets even worse and uh, my EVM gets even worse. And I see that here clearly, of course, also on my constellation diagram now being a little bit more spotty and so forth. So you basically see here now, we have with Roden Schwartz the capabilities to emulate phase noise models, um, user-defined one, or even emulate different uh, crystals. Uh, oscillators and PLLs, and that will help to test functionality in 5G and R, uh, uh, specifically for frequency range 2 at millimeter wave frequencies and conduct on the impact of phase noise at that particular frequencies. 